Hey, what up, America? Hey, what up, America? This is your boy, Bouchon Glover, with a better Black America TV on YouTube. Now, today is Friday, October 12th, 2018. Now, I got to do some damage control today, and I got my, uh, my publicist hat on today, and I got to do some public work for Kanye West. Now, Kanye West went and sat with 45 with President Donald J. Trump, and I personally had to... Uh, look at it myself personally because I didn't want to be programmed with the you know with the liberal news stations uh, into sound bites into uh, believing the snippets that they gave us so I watched the entire uh, interview or at least the most that was broadcast live uh, yesterday because I wanted to make sure that he wasn't uh, going to go out there and coon when I say coon meaning if Kanye West would have showed up with a um, with a suit on some lenses trying to be all dignified and politically correct. That would have been a, a red flag for me. But since the man went in there with a, with, he had his mega hat on, Make America Great Again, which I'm, we're going to discuss that just a little bit because he talked about the hat. But he had on a dicky, a black dicky overcoat over shirt, almost like a, a Pendleton style, but just straight black teed up to the top. And I was like, wait a minute, okay, now, now, now. He's not going up in there cooning. He's not trying to just dress the part. He's going to be the part. And the Kanye West that we saw yesterday, now, I would say please go back and, 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 and be a free thinker and look at it objectively for yourself. Because as men, you know, it's time for us not to choose a side, okay? Because if you're on the right, on the Republican side, and then if you're on the left, the Democratic side, they, they're at war with each other. And it's kind of like a civil war. And the black man is the sacrifice in between. Because I saw a lot of negative uh, posts and a lot of negativity coming from a lot of uh, the black entertainers. More importantly, the black entertainers from Hollywood. And we all know about Hollywood. Okay, you will not have a show. You will not re uh, have a major record deal or... Uh, a sitcom or a reality show or anything if you don't echo the sentiments of your employer. So it's kind of like a, a, a slave mentality because you, you, you got to speak for master. You remember when Martin, uh, when Malcolm said, you know, what's the matter, boss? We sick when he was the House Negro first to feel Negro. Now, the House Negro is upset right now because he has no choice but to support and echo the sentiment of his master because he's not free mentally. OK, he's not a free thinker. So please don't 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 turn the video off. Listen to its entirety because it's not about emotion right now. It's about advancing the race and not more importantly, advancing the culture, because like Damon Dash would say, these culture vultures have stole our culture because during the Judge Kavanaugh um, confirmation hearing, they was in the hallway singing We Shall Overcome. We did overcome and the civil rights era ended in the 60s. So we have to uh, have people like myself, the freed Negro, the freed independently thinking Negro, to basically start speaking up for the ones that's in the middle. And like I said, I got my publicist hat on today because I have to uh, make it make sense for the layman, for the regular persons, so they won't be caught up in believing, you know, the, the concept that they're trying to push. But... The Kanye West I saw yesterday, and I, and I went back and I watched it. I watched uh, Fade to Black with Jay-Z. I watched Fade to Black because I wanted to see the Kanye when he was helping Jay-Z out or selling beats to Jay-Z and selling concepts for the Fade to Black album. Not only the Fade to Black album, but the Fade to Black tour and the movie. That was the same Kanye West that was with Donald Trump. Because he went in there as a visionary. I understand that he's an artist and he, he might have some ways about him that people don't understand. But he went in there with a vision. And sometimes you got to look past the rhetoric and sometimes you got to, you know, decipher through what's real and, 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 and what's authentic versus what's not real and what's not authentic. But his passion is there. And he spoke about 
uh, the job situation. He spoke about bringing jobs back into the communities and the factories into the communities, more so like, uh, in, especially in the Chicago and Detroit areas. Uh, talked about how uh, China is, 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 is uh, taking our jobs and these jobs could be here in America. I understand it, it could have some, um, a, a temperament of politics, but as an independent, as a nonpartisan, um, I have the freedom and the luxury to not have a disposition either way. Because when it comes time for me to vote, I'm going to vote based on my situation and disposition. Because when Al Gore went against George W., you know, I was in a real estate game as a broker assistant, you know, making big time money. So I wanted the party to keep going. So when I went to that ballot box as a registered Democrat, I voted for George W. Bush. So we could just keep the party going. And, but we saw what happened after that. But it's not going to be a sequel. You know, the things are turning around. They, they opened the subprime market up. And that's going to be another topic of discussion. But we got to get the, the message to the people. And when a man brought up Larry Hoover, if you don't know who Larry Hoover is, it's when uh, Rick Ross, the rapper Rick Ross, not Freeway Rick, the homie, the rapper Rick Ross, when he said, they think I'm Big Meech. Larry Hoover. He was talking about Larry Hoover, the the I wouldn't say gang leader, but he he's from Chicago area. He was uh, he created the he was one of the founders of the uh, Gangster Disciples, and he's in prison. Okay, and he's uh, Kanye West brought his name up about pardon, pardoning Larry Hoover, who has like three or four life sentences, and this pretty much was a political prisoner because they were doing more than just. Um, selling dope. They were creating opportunities and dealing with the uh, pool that they had to deal with. Like I've always said, if you got a, if your best choice can get you a life or death, you still got to make a choice. So for him to bring up Larry Hoover on the table, uh, for him to be sitting in the Oval Office, um, leaning on the the, 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 con the congressional presidential table that Lincoln signed bills that Barack Obama sat at and, and, and hitting it like it's a domino table. It brought some type of like relief to me because I know what I was shout for doubt. Our, our forefathers, you know, the, the um, up to Martin Luther King, to, to name a few, they fought for us to have an opportunity to sit at the table. And when they got their opportunity to sit at the table and Lyndon B. Johnson summons the Negro leaders, um, we were sold into a burning house. And then Martin Luther King is on record to say that because not only uh, did the expectation was to advance the race of blacks, it created a minority pool and it lumped up women, the LBGT community, as well as immigrants. So the minority pool is not even about race. So that basically gave the white a like a pat not, not a pat on the back but it gave whites uh, more power because it created a, a, a situation where their empowerment was strong because there was no other you know no race going against them because blacks was trying to from an in in, in, in um, from an inequality perspective blacks was really trying to organize and get to the next level but once we was downsized to a minority pool that basically made the Republic Supreme, in which it is today. And now that we're starting to find out that, you know, we was here uh, before Columbus. Uh, we just celebrated Indigenous Day this week, you know. And now that the Native American, as well as the three-fifths in the Constitution, now it looks like it was just a runner-up. And as black men, we got to go for the runner-up. And that's why the liberals and the Democrats are so upset because the black man is finally at the table and he's thinking for himself. But when you see the other side of it, when you see the other side of it, that's the Democratic Party trying to stop us from advancing and growing as a people. That's why a better black America has come into fruition because black is an acronym for black, Latino, Asian, Caucasian, and the case stands for kinsmen, which is blood related. And that connects everybody. That connects all three races, only three races on the planet. That's black, that's Negroid, Caucasian, and Mongolian. And the Asians fall under the Mongolian category. So it's only three races. So we fighting for all poor and disenfranchised people to create opportunities from a social and economic perspective. So now that we have an opportunity to set the table, it's time to push an agenda 
because Kanye West did have an agenda about bringing the factories back, partnering Larry Hoover. He gave uh, Donald Trump a, a little lesson about the hood, meaning if you don't have uh, opportunities like, you know, people on the other side of town, you're going to do something and that might get you dead or in jail because that's how it was broken down. And then he addressed the mega hat, the Make America Great Again hat. He said that his peers have a problem with it because it says make America great again. And he spoke to the president and says, we got to work together and so let's start creating some hats that says make America great because great again is kind of going backwards. OK, make it great is current, you know, because there's not a such thing as present. It's only past and the future because the past just went one second because time never stops. So that's another debate in itself as well. But he didn't go in there cooning. He did not go in there cooning, and that was the beautiful thing to me. But it's sad to see that, you know, a uh, men that's in Hollywood that's being paid, and they're echoing the sediments of their boss. You don't bite the hand that feeds you, and that's all that is. So I'm not going to call any names, but that's all it is because they can't think freely for themselves. Because what's wrong with a black man sitting at the table with the most powerful man? in the world, the president of the United States, the executive in chief, the head in charge, and to have an agenda. And Jim Brown was sitting right there next to him. And to all the homies who talk, tell me the stories about uh, going to Jim Brown houses, shooting your little videos, a little commercial for Rhino Records, and um, uh, down with a mayor I can, and all of that. Jim Brown sat there and said, he asked Jim if he had anything to say. Jim said, I just want to serve. Because this is our opportunity to get from under uh, women, to get from under the LBGTQ community, to get from under uh, the immigrants and stand up for ourselves as men, sovereign men. But I'm not saying support the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. I'm saying support yourself as an independent, as a free thinker, because we are free. OK, and it's time to act like we are and stop acting like we don't have our own thoughts and all of that. Because when you're in Hollywood, you're gonna have to, you, uh, you know, you're gonna have to say, you're gonna have to give up something. You can't pr promote no masculinity or anything like that. So you're gonna have to put that dress on. You know, you're gonna have to, you know, show some femininity, paint your nails. I don't know what you gotta do, some, but you can't sit back and promote some masculinity because it's a gay man and a woman cutting your check. All right. So let's not just fall for the okie doke and, and, and look at our entertainers as leaders. They're echoing the sediments of their bosses and the ones that's picked, that's cutting the check for them. But as free thinkers, we are independent and we are sovereign men and we must fight for the advancement of the culture because the culture vultures, like Damon Dash would say, they stole our culture and they make a civil rights anything. The civil rights era ended in the 60s when they signed the Civil Rights Act, but they lumped the black man with the minority pool and we're getting out of the pool and we're going to be independent and sovereign. But like I said, I got my publicist hat on today and I got to run some damage control because, like I said, the man didn't go in there cooning. And that's what made me really look at it because I looked at it objectively. OK, I wanted to see if he was going to go in there and not be himself. But like I said, I went back and watched that Fade to Black, uh, Fade to Black uh, album and that same Kanye West with the hat to the side, with a lot of passion. And, 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 and it just like I said, we got an opportunity to sit at the table. So what I'm saying is, if you're going to go in that timeline, don't hate. You know, give some positivity, give something positive to what you want to see for blacks and the poor and disenfranchised, because we believe in all power to all people. And like I said, the B stands for black, the L stands for Latino, the A stands for Asian, which covers all the Mongolians, and the C stands for Caucasian, the K stands for kinsmen, which makes us all blood related. And if you women want to rock with us, let's go ahead and say blacks and add an S, and that's the sisterhood. With that being said, man, today is a great day. Don't hate on my boy. He had an opportunity to go in there and meet the president, and he did. Because Easy e when met, met the president. That was a G move when he did it. But Kanye West going there with an agenda, and we want to get mad at him. But free Larry Hoover. See, and that's, and that's what the situation is. Let's free Larry Hoover. Let's talk about that. Because if we want to talk about prison reform, we got to take care of poverty first. Because poverty aids the petty crime, and the petty crime will get you in that system. So before we can get to that next level... We got to do something about poverty. And that's the main objective and main agenda on this A Better Black America movement and Black Stands for All. And that's all for today. I'm your boy, Bouchon Glove with A Better Black America signing off. Free Levy Hoop. What up, Yank? Holla at your boy.